howdy, welcome to Fishtails. I'm going to tie up a few droppers for the popper dropper flies that I've been using lately. I need to make some special droppers. I, I had some results on uh, Tuesday that was a little uh, a little different than what I thought. I, I kind of think the crappie were not necessarily keying in on bait fish. I think they might have been taking dragonfly nymphs or some sort of bug in the water and not necessarily a fish. The fly, the fly that I caught them on was uh, brown and real simple looking. It didn't look like a minnow, it looked like a bug. So I'm going to make something that looks a little bit like a minnow and a little bit like a bug, but that'll be my dropper. Let's get started. I got my handy dandy little variety pack of eagle claw hooks. And I think I'm going to start with something about this size. I don't know what good it is to have 50 hooks when you can't get one of them out. Ah, there we go. There's a little hook. I'm going to straighten that out. It's, it's a bait hook, bait holder. I'm going to make several flies. Let's see how we got here. Flatten the barb real nice. Adjust the camera a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's a nice little hook. I've got it straightened out. I'm gonna start tying. Alright, as with all flies, or most of them I should say. You start by threading up the hook. I need to dig out a few things, a few supplies. Get that thing in there real good. There we go. Do quite a few things. Let me dig out my eyeballs. Everybody knows what this is. It's a bead chain like you see on a, a uh, fan to turn the fan on and off. Oh, I could use my scissors, but that's probably a bad idea. Let's see. Hmm, maybe not. Work fine. Alright. Get the eyes on there real good. drop of super glue probably isn't necessary these are not high value flies Ooh, that stuff is gooey all right now I'm gonna use I'm gonna make one the body of this fly out of peacock hurl tie in a few strands of it with the other man it's been a while since I made this type of fly oh, that's got a nice body to it already Tempted to run that thread up there and palmer this in place. down the back of the fly and whip that thing right there oh I'll 
tell you what, I like the way this fly looks. And it doesn't get any simpler. Now I want to do is cut these right there. And that's it. See that? Get that spread out a little bit. Look at that. That's four strands of peacock hurl as the body in this case I got blue thread that's my new fly at least the first one I'm going to tie several but that that looks like a bug and it looks like a minnow or a fry it's got a beautiful color to it that peacock hurl really looks good alright let's make the next one next fly something similar Lighten that barb, straighten it out so it's in line, doesn't have a twist to it. I don't know if the twist makes any difference. I don't necessarily like it in my flies, I think it might make them twist. I don't want to waste my thread. This is actually rod wrap for making, making fly fishing or making a, a fishing rod. This is what you tie down the guides with. Just happens to be a nice and strong thread. A little on the thick side, but it's all right. Use what you got. That's how I look at it. Right there. One, two, three, four. Run that all the way back. ka -chow. Scissor, we're good. That is, this is metal bead chain. Knock that stuff right out. I tell you what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a blue fly. We're just gonna use this blue thread. I'm gonna give this thing a hmm 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 hmm. What should I do? It's gonna be a roadkill roadkill fly. Got me a squirrel tail. One I picked up off the road. I'm going to get down toward base where they're shorter. Probably ought to get my stacker and get these things nice and even. I think I am. I'll get dig out my stacker. Get ready to use one of these things basically a brass tube inside this thing and you put the hair down in there the way you want it to be oriented and then you start tapping it. We'll see what it does here in just a second. Cut a little bit of hair. See how the ends are not even? Watch this. Put it in the stacker. What I'm doing is you tap it like that on the desk. Little bit, little bit, little bit, shaking the whole table. And what you do is you turn it sideways like this, and just the ends of them come out like this. Now they're even on the pointed end. And if I, if I'm right, yeah, see that puts the band. You see that band because they all have the same colored tips. Now I'm gonna tie that into my fly on the back. It's probably a little too much. That's all right. We'll work with it. I'm going to put this around here. Around here. Sense that body down real good. See, and now they're all nice and even toward the tail. That is probably too much. Tell you what, now I'm going to trim all that out of the out of the hook's way. And cinch it all down real good.
better your scissors are, the better for you when you have to do this precision type work. And I can come back if I don't like this blue thread. I'll come back and hit it with a sharpie, darken it up. There you go. Now I want to take a little bit of pale. I got some pale yellow. Whatever this stuff is, comes on these cards. Pale yellow. Where's the end of it? There it is. I'm going to tie this in and come back up to fly. So give it a body color I want. Again, these are real, real neutral colors. This won't be the prettiest fly I've ever made. But the fish won't care. I actually did that in the wrong order. I should have run that thread back to the back when I tied it in and then brought it forward. Build a little bit of a head on that. Go ahead and whip it. Like I said, these are just droppers, various droppers. They're all made pretty much the same way. Cut that out of there. Put a little stupor glue on here. of this thing. There we go. I like the way the super glue blends with the fibers of the thread. And it will, I mean that thing is bulletproof. You aren't going to hurt that fly no matter what. There's another one. There's number two. Little short tail, squirrel tail. I like the colors. It's the color and the profile on the water that I'm shooting for. That could look like a bug or that could look like a minnow. That's number two. I use a little more of that squirrel tail. And I get my little hair stacker. Not going to use quite as much on this fly. Once again, I'm going to take it from the base. Shorter hairs, but they all have the same colored tips. This can be really tough when it's a lot of static, when it's real dry and cold. You get a lot of static and this doesn't even work. That hair sticks together. But not down here. It's wet today. It's cold, but it's wet. Pull out all that excess. See how nice and even those get? It's just what I'm looking for. I'm going to try to keep these little better separated. When you're dealing with hair, this front, you want to cut it at an angle. That way it'll lay flat. It'll taper down like you want it. There. Let's take some copper. I've got some of this copper colored crystals, Chanel, Chanel, Charlie, Chanel. This stuff is copper colored. Another color I haven't used much. Hope that's where it starts. Oh, look at there. I got lucky. Tie this in. Someday I need to get me a good rotary vise. But that day is not today. Cut 
cut off my a chenille. Schwack goes the chenille. Now we're just going to build a nice, simple, but quite elegant blue head. I may come back and make that black with a magic marker. There you go. That is a good enough head. I just put a couple of half inches in half hitches in that. Like that. Get a black magic marker. For the most part. Put a little super glue on it. There you go. Number three. Done. That's a nice looking little fly in it. Nothing to it. Got a big head on him. Need to hang him up so he'll dry. Go up a little bit in hook size and tie a different fly. I have had some luck with these in the spring. I've got some rabbit strip. This stuff makes good flies. The action on this is just incredible. I gotta dig out my deer hair. may or may not be a dropper I need to get my deer hair out but the first thing you gotta do is thread up the hook I'll use squirrel I'll use squirrel tail for the head part I've never stacked squirrel tail hair it'll be an experiment alright this thing will go hook down so we're going to tie this on. I'm going to move it forward just a tad bit. Well, these things, well, there's one spring. Out at, uh, I don't know what is the name of that lake. Brewer's Lake, I think, in Caldwell. A friend of mine, Jim Marsh had a little cabin on that on that lake and we got out there one early spring day and I proceeded to just murder the crappie with something similar to this that I'm making today the only thing I like about the rabbit hair is it is tough man this stuff is tough but boy it'll swim through the water all right, now I'm going to take my squirrel tail and start cutting some of this longer stuff. I need a bunch of it too. If I want to stack this and if it's going to look like anything. I don't know, this may not work. There's the first bunch. This is a subsurface fly. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it around backward to start out with. I'm going to run that thread back to where it meets the rabbit strip. I'm going to put this on top of here like this. Wrap it around and cinch it down. Like that, and then pull it back over top. Oh yeah, this is going to work. I'm going to do this several times and you come up in front of it like that. I'll get this stuff to lay down a little bit better 
as I put more and more hair on it. This process takes a while. I'm trying not to get it down underneath the hook either. I want all this on top of the fly. Of this stuff, do the same thing, put it right on top. A couple of wraps, pull, spread. I'm trying to get it spread out just a little bit. Alright. This stuff's a little slipperier. As you can see how that's starting to come together. See how that's holding that second layer back see how that's holding it back it's going to be an interesting looking fly it's got the right combination of black darker color and lighter colors I'm going to do, I'm going to spread that out a little bit, I'm going to do one more, one more spot of hair. Here, relatively small one. Oh, somebody subscribed. All right, there we go. Let me spin that around a little bit. Level it out. What you can do is if you if you want that head to be really low profile like this, just soak that with super glue. Which is what I might do. So it holds this thing back the way I want it. I usually end up gluing my fingers to everything. See how that's cinching back on itself? I just keep working it back, working it back. Come back forward. My hands cramping up. I'm probably gonna wish I had a bigger hook, but that's okay. There's plenty of it sticking out. There's a nice fly. Alright, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and do this a couple of half inches. My hand's cramping up, but they are. I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to cinch all this back out of the way. Right back. Got those little feeler hairs out of the way. Even though it might be good to leave them on there. They look like whiskers. If this thing looks like a catfish, that would be the whiskers. Alright, put a little super glue right here on the front. I'm going to go ahead and do like I said. I'm going to soak the front of this fly and super glue. That's when it helps to have runny super glue, not gel jelly type. So I'll need to get some more super glue someday. Alright, that's quite a bit. We'll hold that and let it sit a little bit. Alright, glue's dry a little bit. Now it needs to get a haircut. These are serrated scissors. They have a serrated edge looks like a file. What it does is that it will it'll grip the hair instead of trying to let it pull away from itself. I'm going to trim this out right in here so it has this looking shield looking head. And after I use the fly a little bit and I figure out 
what needs to be done to make it better. Basically, that's what you leave it. You leave it right about there. I've got a little too much. Got a little too much on one side. Tempted to leave it like that. There. Now that rabbit hair will fill in, and as this stuff gets wet get saturated so it'll lay down a little more but the idea behind this type of fly is that the head of that thing actually moves a lot of water when it's coming through the water it, it makes some some turbulence I can cut it way back or I can leave it big like that but the thing to do is to go try it and see what happens that's a little diversion from uh, the droppers That squirrel tail stack's pretty good, but it's a little harder to work with. I've got some gaps in the back. Fish don't care. Real tempted to whack this thing back a bunch. I will leave it like that to start with. All right. On to number four. But that'll be for another video. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good. Bye.